There's tons of modeling techniques. No, I don't mean those types. I mean 3D modeling techniques. And if you're wondering which ones are best suited for Blender, you have come to the right place. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. Technique number one, Boolean. Boolean modeling has become one of the most popular methods in Blender and is well suited for hard surface and complex objects. On the technical side of things, Booleans are mathematical operations, which you might already know from your math classes. For example, here is a Venn diagram which contains some of the more common Boolean operations which consist of intersections, unions and subtractions. In Blender we have to use the Boolean modifier to achieve these operations. To make things a little easier we can enable Blender's built-in Bool tool add-on. This will let us use shortcuts to create Booleans. For example, Control Numpad minus will add a difference Boolean. Control numpad plus will add a union boolean. Control numpad asterisk will add an intersect boolean. And control numpad slash will add a slice boolean. A boolean consists out of two parts. A cutter, which is the object that we use to intersect union or difference with. And the target object, which is the object that we added the modifier to. With more complex shapes, usually rounder shapes, booleans tend to add in nasty shading artifacts. However, we can work around these by adding additional geometry or support loops to minimize these shading issues. By adding in loop cuts in this example, Blender has more faces to work with, resulting in less shading errors. We have to do this both for the target and for the cutter to work properly. It can also help to add in a weighted normal modifier to further smoothen the results. If you want to take the Boolean workflow to another level, there's a couple of paid add-ons that are very useful. These are Box Cutter, Hard Ops and Mesh Machine. Now I think Boolean modeling is incredibly useful as it's very fast and efficient and is definitely a great technique to learn if you want to become a 3D artist. Technique number two, sculpting. Sculpting is the go-to workflow for a lot of artists out there. It's a diverse technique, some might even call it an art form, mimicking real life sculpting. It comes with a ton of different tools, each with their own use case for creating your object. Sculpting lends itself best for organic shapes, characters and creatures. To start sculpting in Blender, you'll need to head over to sculpting mode. Here you can immediately start sculpting on, for example, your default cube. Now if you click a little bit on the default cube, you'll notice though that this does not exactly work. And that is because of a lack of geometry for Blender to work with, and you can fix this in several ways. You can either enable Din Toko and set a resolution, which will add geometry to your object on the area where you sculpt with a resolution similar to the value you set here. Or you can remesh your object with a small voxel size to generate quads and work with that. Some of the tools, or as they're technically called brushes, come with the option to both add and remove to your mesh. By default it adds, so if you're just clicking here, it will inflate or add to your mesh and by holding control it will remove or sort of deflate your mesh. By holding shift and clicking, you can smooth out parts of your sculpt. By pressing F, you can quickly change the size of your brush and with shift F, you can change the strength of your brush. Sculpting usually tends to result in fairly high poly count meshes quickly. However, Blender handles these like a champ and will still chuck through it even with millions of polys. Now, most people use a drawing tablet for sculpting. However, you can do it with a mouse. I think that the pen pressure from a drawing tablet will make it a lot easier though. So I would advise you to get one if you are serious about sculpting. Now getting the hang of sculpting can take quite some time, so don't get discouraged if you can't create what you want immediately. Sculpting is an art form and if you put in the hours and become great at it, you are definitely setting yourself up for success in the future. Now I want to tell you a bit of a story. I've always known I wanted to do something with design. Fresh out of college, I went looking for a job and as a lot of you know, a portfolio is the one thing that sets you apart from the rest. And in this digital era, a physical portfolio just doesn't cut it anymore. A web-based portfolio is the bare minimum and not only that it has to look good and professional as well. Squarespace has helped me out tremendously with this. Their fluid engine drag and drop editor has made sure I have yet to write a single line of code for a website. Their customizable templates give me a great starting point for creating a unique design without the hassle of having to think of everything myself. Their built-in analytics allow me to keep an overview of traffic on my website and one of the most crucial things for me as a designer if I want to change 
reach the design of my website, it's a matter of hours of work and not weeks. Head on over to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to publish your website, use code Kaizen Tutorials to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Technique number three, subdivision. Now I've done a video on this technique before as it's my personal favorite, but subdivision modeling is one of the most common modeling methods. It's primarily used for products and smoother type meshes, but is versatile enough to be able to use for characters and organic objects alike. In basis, the technique revolves around the subdivision modifier. This modifier adds additional geometry, which averages out all the faces and smooths them with this average as well. So by, for example, adding a subdivision modifier to a cube, we turn it into something of a sphere. If we then add in more geometry, we can sort of define the shape of how this thing needs to look. To sharpen the edges, we can, for example, add support loops. These are basically loop cuts, which you can add with Control R. And by bringing these support loops in closer to the edge, the curve sharpens and the crease becomes tighter. This is somewhat of a destructive workflow though, as we can lose control over these loops down the line if we just add in more and more geometry. Now, for example, a non-destructive workflow would be to add in a bevel modifier above our subdivision surface modifier. The bevel modifier will add geometry on sharp edges, which will then again result in sharper edges after subdividing. To control which edges are or aren't beveled, change the limit method to weight and in edit mode select the edges you wish to bevel. Then open up the item menu with N and increase the mean bevel weight for these edges. Finally, you can increase the bevel segments and amount to create the look that you want. This method is so versatile and so useful, I just love it and I think it's here to stay. So investing in learning this technique will always be a good thing to have under your belt. Technique number four, procedural. Procedural modeling is a method which has been growing rapidly over the last few years with the introduction of geometry nodes in Blender. It's complicated, but it's super interesting at the same time and can result in unlimited variations of your models in seconds. In essence, it's giving Blender a set of rules to determine how a model should look like. By inputting different numbers into this rule set, Blender generates different and unique models. With geometry nodes, this is doable in both a basic form and a very complicated and advanced form. However, since this method uses parts which have been pre-modeled, it's not a standalone technique like the other ones in this video. In most cases, you will need one of the other techniques I've shown to create the parts necessary to make up the procedural models. With the right set of parts, you can create amazing model generators which have unlimited potential. I can't really show how to do it in this video because that would take up too long, but before deciding on this method, there's a consideration to be made. Procedural modeling can take a long time to set up correctly. So depending on the amount of assets you want to create, this might or might not be worth it. Generally speaking, I'd advise you to only approach this method if you want to create, for example, 10 similar assets or maybe even more. But if you only need one or two, it's probably better just to do them by hand instead of creating this procedural modeling setup. Nonetheless, though, Blender's geometry nodes is a true powerhouse and still very much under development. So it will just grow bigger and bigger, better and better. So investing in learning this will definitely be worth it in the long run. Now, obviously, there are still a lot of other 3D modeling methods, which I haven't shown yet, like NURBS or CAD or photo scanning, box modeling. But I think these are some of the methods that Blender's best suited for. What do you think? Do you agree or do you maybe miss one that you always use inside of Blender? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about these techniques, I've put some helpful links in the video description. And if you want to learn more about subdivision modeling, I think I might already have the perfect video for you. As always, a big thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel.